Good afternoon, everybody. Drew Griffin here with Pottstown Local, as well as a number of other Facebook pages. We're here on behalf of the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm super excited to be joined by the host of Chamber Chat, Bill Vitiello, who is uh, quite the extraordinaire host, as well as uh, all things the Victory Bank. I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to you to introduce our guest for today's Chamber Chat Live. Super excited to be hanging out and speaking with Andrew. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you, Bill, and you can take it from there. Thanks, Drew. appreciate it. You always find a, a better way to introduce me every time. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for calling me an extraordinaire. Uh, greatly appreciated, I guess. Yes, you are. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Vitiello. I am the Institutional and Business Development Manager for the Victory Bank. Welcome to Chamber Chat Live here on Facebook. It's a series of interviews that we've been conducting during this whole COVID situation. Uh, but first, we do like to thank Drew Griffin from Delicious Marketing. Drew is doing all the behind the scenes to put this together and bring this to you live on this Facebook channel and all the others that we're syndicating to as well. We'd like to thank Eileen, who is our, the executive director of the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce, she, and her assistance in putting all of this together as well. And we also would like to thank our sponsor, the Ben Exchange, your friends for business benefits. So I'm usually doing this big, long intro to our guest, um, but I'm going to actually let him introduce our, himself. His name is Andrew Rohrbaugh from Schooley Mitchell. Andrew, welcome to Chamber Chat Live. How are you doing today? Hey, pretty good. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm very excited to be on Chamber Chat. I've been a member of the Chamber, uh, the Tri-County Chamber for a couple of years now. And uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the uh, the communication that we've received as, member, as members of the Chamber for, uh, for all the all the resources available from state and local governments and things like that. You know, it's it's been a lot of static with regards to what's going on with COVID. And it's been nice to have that, uh, you know, that 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 communication. Uh, and that's one of the main things I'm going to talk about today, which is communication and uh, how we're using that. And especially now, you know, this venue is is is, is fantastic. Not something I would have done before. Um, <laughs> you know, so so that that is case in point to say, OK, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so typically for those who are tuning in for the first time, typically it's a little bit of a back and forth between me and my guest. I might ask some questions and get some answers. Um, Andrew, though, has been moving forward and providing a lot of businesses in the community with a uh, it's really a formal presentation. There's a whole PowerPoint, uh, but he's going to bring it together a bit informally today. So I'm actually going to turn it over to him, uh, turn him loose on it. Uh, I will certainly interject if I do have any questions or maybe can provide clarification or um, maybe somebody uh, makes a live comment in. You can certainly comment in and Andrew would be happy to answer those questions. So, Andrew, I'm going to turn it over to you. You're still going to see me here. I'll be available, but uh, the floor is yours. OK, Bill, thanks very much. So, uh, you know, I, I had, you know, a plan to, uh, you know, a, a lot of my presentation, you know, the PowerPoint, I don't want to kill anybody with PowerPoint. But, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, I kind of want to get my thoughts together and understand how I can uh, communicate with with folks about communication and and uh, and how, you know, we've all scrambled to, uh, you know, do our best to keep our businesses up and running to, uh, you know, communicate with each other. Um, I, I know that if you did, did have a chance to pick up on the um, chamber chat from, I think it was two or three weeks ago from my KP interface, uh, Brian um, um, Pickel. Uh, I, I know Brian and, and, and some of my material kind of is a little bit, uh, goes over some of the stuff he said. Uh, it was a good presentation. I recommend going back and taking a look at it if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and I also don't remember, I don't mind uh, uh, promoting a fellow chamber member. Um, and so it basically what I want to talk about today is our best practices for working at home on a team. You know, you know the last four months have kind of been a whirlwind of, of, you know, trying to figure out how do we continue doing business? How do we continue? You know, can we open up now? Where do I go? You know, those kinds of things. So if you're working through teleconferencing and, and tele you know, telecommuting, um, you know, there are some things that you need to keep in mind if you're in, a, in management and also if you're the person that's working from home. Uh, you know, some people work very well from home without, you know, that that, uh, you know, structure of the office. And some people don't. They have to they're on a learning curve like we all are to understand how do I how do I structure my day and schedule meetings so that I can get the things done and do my job and, and all that kind of stuff without, you know, the the the, the you know, 
the, the guy with the weed whacker who's going to just do his weed whacking whenever whenever he, he feels it's necessary uh or you know the the kid traffic or the you know pet traffic those kinds of things in the background you do need to keep uh, keep in mind that some people will work differently that way um but communications uh, are key um and, and so you know when you have folks not talking to each other in an office those kinds of things you know, you have to keep in touch with folks. Uh, they, they want, you know, people really enjoy having, you know, a, a talking to a familiar voice, especially if they're trying to work through something, uh, you know, and, and those kinds of things. Um, and, uh, you know, but but working remotely does uh, eliminate the commute time. I know I'm saving money on gas. My business is, has, you know, historically been, I meet face to face with people and, you know, shake their hands and, you know, those kinds of things. And so, you know, uh, I don't, I don't get to do that as much now. But, uh, you know, and maybe in the future we're going to use these this technology a little bit more um, to to aid us in our communications and to help keep the gas prices down and those kinds of things. Um, you know, so I, I really feel like that's uh, that's it's important for us to keep you know communication in mind. Uh, and and I'll get to why I'm talking so much about communication <laughs> a little bit later, but. Um, so remote meeting guidance, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I've been involved in lots of Zoom calls. I know the kids have been involved in lots of Zoom meetings and things like that for school. Uh, you know, just some some high level guidance for, fo for folks, you know, keep the ball rolling. It's really important for you to understand who is the uh, who is the moderator and for the moderator to understand their role. Um, so far, you know, we're doing very well today. <laughs> uh, so we, we pass. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so you need to touch base. I mean, when you're on a business call, you need to touch base, but you need to avoid distractions. You know, those kinds of things that happen in the background, you know, the, the, the computer's falling off my little stand. That's not great. I, I should have done a little bit better job with that. Uh, and then you have to understand if you are on the call and there's a, uh, you know, a time zone chain difference between who you're talking to. That's one of the things, you know, I, I have primarily focused my business in this area. But frankly, I, I've had to pivot and do everything remotely, you know. And so, in a, in a, in a, in, in, with that regard, I could probably do do business almost anywhere I wanted to. So, um, you know, th that's something that you need to uh, take keep in mind as people do it. Hello. Sorry, did I lose you for a second? No, we're good. I think that's my computer. That's all right. I'm glad you brought up the thing about the time zones because I just set up three yeah. phone calls with uh, individuals this week and we were going back and forth and I had, I had recognized on the one, I'm like, I don't think we're talking about the same time. So I made sure that I put Eastern Standard Time behind it and we finally got together on it. So that's a, that's a great point. That's always, a, it's always a challenge when you're talking to people in California or Seattle or, or Alaska or whatever. So, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. So, um, so in a general sense, I guess also when we're talking about the high level, um, you know, uh, information, you need to be uh, you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to get your, get your work done, uh, you know, and uh, and uh, adjust time frames as necessary. This was one I hadn't really thought of. Now, the example that I had I brought up that there, you know, I live in an, uh, a community with a uh, homeowners association and they will mow the yard. At, and sometimes sometimes I can't control when that happens. I might have a phone call. Uh, that's scheduled for that time. I know that when I'm working with people, I don't want to have that background noise there you know, distracting us. And so if I can be a little bit flexible, that really helps me out and uh, helps out the folks I mean to talk to. Um, you know, some meetings can be boring, so <laughs> keep it light. You want to keep that light and, and, and keep it, uh, keep everything moving so that you can uh, you know, work, work from home and be productive. Uh, you need to enable your employees to to work from home. So this is something that uh, this is actually something that Brian said in the chamber chat a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, and, and I hadn't really thought of it, but it is in, important for uh, for folks that you know, managers or employee or employers uh, to set your policies for people, so, so they understand how they're supposed to react and and, and talk on these on these uh, on these calls. Um, there's lots of really great uh, communication and collaboration tools out there. Um, in a former lifetime, I was in technology sales and, and we really, really wanted to sell uh, telecommunicate uh, communication or, you know, uh, 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 software and solutions. And uh, it, it didn't really take off. You know, I'm, you know, that was 10 years ago. All right. But uh, the reason there's a couple of reasons for that. The, um, you know, the, the bandwidth um, that you have uh, had 10 years ago wasn't what you have now. 
But here's the deal. You know, you do have to keep in mind what what are we what are we paying for for using these tools? You know, we're, we're paying for, you know, our phone bills and our Internet bills and those kinds of things. Now, they're not going to change necessarily if you're using it more, but we're definitely using it more <laughs> now. Um, so there are some tools out there. Zoom, I've already mentioned uh, Facebook. I mean, sorry, Facebook is good. Uh, SharePoint for collaboration. There's Google Drive, Microsoft Teams. Depending upon what your business needs are, it's a good idea to take a look at what's out there in the marketplace. And I, I mentioned that scramble. We had um, over the last four months, businesses have scrambled to put in, in place solutions so that their uh, employer employees can work from home, can work remotely, can still get their jobs done. Might be a good time to, to now, now that we can breathe a little bit, maybe a little bit, uh, to, to take a step back and see if you've got the right solutions there. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're mentioning that. And I just want to interject here real quick. I can tell you as the Victory Bank, um, from the beginning, we actually had a pandemic plan. Uh, we always knew that we'd, we would be an essential business and to you know close a financial institution is just not something uh, that's in the cards, <laughs> to so to say. So we've always had a pandemic solution and we've executed on that really, really well. And I know there's some businesses out there that did not have a pandemic plan uh, that probably will take a pretty hard look at it now and include all the other things that you were um, referring to about, you know, expectations for the employees and different ways to communicate and just how to operate in either uh, an entire remote uh, situation or some sort of hybrid situation. Yeah, Bill, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, Matt. I mean, you know, one of the things we're talking about communication and how important that is. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, so as an employer or, or as an employee, you need to think about your, your phones, you know, and, and, and how do you communicate in that way? You know, the landline is the, is the, the in many cases, the, the last resort for emergency kind of communication, right? Um, and, and not everybody has one. Um, so, so, you know, most, most uh, people, or lots of people, I would say, lots of people now use their cell phones. And so if they're using their cell phone to do to work at home uh, and to communicate that way, um, then, you know, the employers need to think about, okay, um, are they paying for that cell phone? Do, do they, you know, it, it, who's paying for the, the voice and data fees? Uh, something to look at, you know, and, and you never know what kind of plan your employee has and they might run up the bill. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things that could maybe was unforeseen, especially with some of those uh, those employers that maybe didn't have the best pandemic plan and it hadn't been so uh, as forward forward thinking as they should have. Obviously, yeah, I think a lot of folks are going to do that now. Um, this is also something that Brian had mentioned uh, during his talk, you know, the Internet. I think his example was he had to move his home office upstairs because of the kid and pet traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so he, you know, was able to he has a pretty good in Internet there, but he did check it. Um, and if you don't have good internet in, in, in your new workspace or wherever that might be, uh, you can get, uh, you know, Wi-Fi boosters and things like that. And, and, uh, that's also, that's also something we can, you know, uh, KP interface can help. I can help out to give them some recommendations. I don't, I don't sell that stuff, but, uh, but those are, those are readily available. But before you, before you continue, Andrew, though, for those folks who are watching live, I would encourage if you have any comments, questions or suggestions for Andrew before he ends his presentation today to please uh, do so on Facebook. Uh, so go ahead, Andrew, continue, please. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about, a, I'm going to change the subject now here. Thank you for the slide. I'm going to change the subject now uh, to just some general information. I hadn't thought of this. I do help companies with their waste expenses uh, to help reduce those for them, but I hadn't really thought of this. Some gov governments are, and, and I say some governments because I mean, they, we could list states and you know local governments and all that kind of stuff. Uh, issuing special guidance for waste disposal for households affected by COVID. Now, the the this I can say the CDC says medical waste is really not handled differently if it's COVID or if it's you know the flu. Um, they that is very controlled and they're very good about that. Uh, but you know the the, the I guess to be uh, kind to your trash handlers, <laughs> which are some some of the best people. Um, you know, do it, it is a good idea if you do have some COVID, you know, the trash in your house, double bag it. That's what I was told, you know, as far as, you know, his recommendation for that. Um, otherwise, I mean, there isn't anything you really need to do. Don't start burning your garbage. That That's never a good thing. So, <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to move on now because I, I, I mentioned uh, we have all scrambled to to pivot and be able to work remotely. Well, some businesses, and mine uh, also was affected by this, 
uh, you know, I need to get uh, signatures every now and again. You know, I've got a, I got agreements that need to get signed and I need to have, you know, make sure that that gets done uh, in a way that's secure, uh, that, that I can make sure it's, uh, you know, uh, authenticated. And e-signatures are, are, are one of those ways to do that. Uh, again, there's lots of companies that went out and just said, I, I, we have to have this right now. But it is a good time to, uh, to look at how much does that cost? Are there better opportunities for you to bring those costs down moving into the future? Because this is going to be something that we're going to see, I think, more of. I've seen it with, with banks and, and, and insurance companies. And, you know, there, but there's businesses like mine where I didn't think that was an, an important thing. Oh, but now we have to have that because I can't go meet somebody face to face or or at least it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to try to do that all the time. So, yeah. Uh, so. And I was going to say, you bring up a good point because that actually. So as an organization, we were considering uh, using e-signatures uh, right before the pandemic hit. And wow, did the pandemic <laughs> accelerate that process? Yeah. Um, but sure. not only for e-signatures, but there's probably some other things that businesses have needed to accelerate because of the pandemic. That is now, you know, the uh, you know the new normal, I guess you'd say. And that, and that, if we move to the next slide, that's a great segue. <laughs> um, so, zero contact payments. You know, uh, folks are a little worried, and, and and so you know, touching the the punch pad if they're going to do a transaction at the grocery store or whatever. Now, there's Apple Pay. There's all kinds of other things. When a business is, and and so a bit that you do need to take a look at if you're if you're accepting. Um, you know, credit cards, which most most businesses have to do that nowadays, um, you know, with the zero contact, whether it's for the phone or the tap of the uh, of the credit card, um, you know, there's an expense, there's a merchant services expense that goes along with that through the processing company. And uh, and so you need to take a look. Do I have the best solution here? I, I, am I am I shooting myself in the foot? I've got more business because I did the zero touch, zero contact payments, but now I'm paying more uh, higher, higher merchant services. Fee. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, I, uh, I, I'll Bill, do you have any other questions? I've kind of come to the end and I was going to give a little bit of a, a sales pitch, but not very much. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, folks certainly look, you're providing good information to the community, yeah. um, whether it was you know somewhat similar to what uh, KP did. Uh, you know, you bring your own spin to it and you have your own information. So, um, you know, I would just encourage folks who are watching Again, we've been through a lot as a, a as a business community, and there's a number of chamber members out there who will be able to assist going forward, either now or going forward, uh, perhaps with planning, perhaps with something new that you want to implement. And Schooly Mitchell and Andrew are are just one of one uh, avenue for the businesses to certainly uh, take a look at. So. Um, you're pull, pulling up your contact information there. I think folks on Facebook can see, but um, yeah, I guess maybe review how they can reach you, Andrew, please. Well, I, I guess the, the best way for, for anybody to reach me would be uh, via telephone. Uh, you know, uh, my, my phone number is, is stated there. Um, you know, that, that, is a, that is the number one way to, to reach me. Now, uh, send me an email. I know this is the, e the longest email I have ever had in my whole lifetime. Uh, you know, so I get that. So, um, so, but I, you know, send me an email to call me up. Uh, you know, that would be, those are both great ways to get a hold of me. If you go to schoolymitchell.com, you can find me uh, for, for, um, Reading. Um, that's kind of where they put me, although I don't really have a geographic, uh, uh, constriction at this point. Um, so, you know, those are great ways. There's, uh, there's some super information on schoolymitchell.com with regards to, some some short videos to help people understand what we do and how we can help. No, that's great. And again, I would encourage everybody to contact Andrew. In fact, before this interview, Andrew sent us his resume over thinking that I would fancy the thing up and make some kind of big intro. Let me tell you, Andrew's qualified to help you and your business. Uh, he's had many, many years in the business, uh, a couple different, uh, you know, uh, areas as well. So yeah, Andrew, we appreciate you being a guest today. But before we bring Drew back in and before we go, since we are the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce and we are proving to our audience that you are not a robot, I'm going to ask you three rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. What is your favorite summer activity? Swimming. Swimming. Great. How about your favorite ice cream flavor? The, uh, butter rum. Butter rum. See, I like that. I was thinking about it. I'm like, is he going to say chocolate, vanilla, like something plain? But <laughs> butter rum is very specific. I like it. Uh, and are you a morning person or a night person? 
I'm definitely a morning person. Yeah, same same with me as well. Yeah, you can't <laughs> not going to catch me past like 10 p.m. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> no way. So well, thank you, Andrew, for being a guest today. We greatly appreciate it. We'll bring Drew back in. Uh, but before we go, hang in there, Andrew, for a second. Uh, before we go, we, we would like to thank Drew Griffin from Delicious Marketing, who does put all this behind the scenes together on the technical aspect of things and is sing syndicating it for all the other pages. we like to thank Eileen, who helped uh, get Andrew as a guest and set that up for today. And we also like to thank the Ben Exchange, your friends for business benefits. Drew, you are armed with all kinds of information now. Tons of information. And, you know, I, I do appreciate Andrew coming on here. And uh, I apologize for not getting the first couple of slides up there. Uh, but it, it paints a vivid picture uh, for a lot of people who may not be considered, you know, may not know how to navigate this whole COVID-19 thing. You know, here in southeastern Pennsylvania, Berks County, Montgomery County, uh, everyone has kind of come out of this whole, you know, yellow phase. And now we're going back into, you know, navigating uh, everything opening back up again. And I think there's still a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, tentativeness, right? So a lot of people don't know really how to, how to navigate going back to work. How should they behave in open uh, open spaces, going in, in and out of businesses like restaurants and banks and so on and so forth. But, you know, a lot of people are still working from home or maybe they're uh, transitioning, working in an office. Now they need to kind of um, telecommute or not even telecommute. They're, they're working from home now. Uh, they're not really sure what that means, right? Maybe a lot of people haven't had that opportunity to quote unquote telecommute. And now, you know, Andrew has kind of laid this out, maybe a little bit of, of a teaser as to some things worth considering. Um, this is, you know, Andrew's a great, great uh, contact. Reach out to Andrew and, you know, have that conversation, see how he might be able to help you navigate all this stuff. Uh, you know, transitioning, working from home. What does that actually mean? Like privacy for your and and security for, you know, for your business or your employer or or, or something along those lines, right? Uh, how to navigate all that kind of stuff? Uh, how you actually did business uh, in a in a general location? Now you're doing things from home. How do you set up your environment? You know, what kind of uh, requirements of internet and security and so on and so forth? There's so many different things that were typically at our fingertips for those of us who worked in an office or worked for an employer somewhere. Now we're required to do the, this stuff from home. Uh, maybe your business doesn't have an action plan. Uh, you know, Andrew has kind of laid this out in his presentation. Go ahead and reach out to Andrew either by his telephone number or uh, by way of his email and uh, open up that conversation. If you're looking to navigate and try to figure out how you can start to do business from home uh, or, um, you know, in, in, a, in a situation where uh, you're affected by COVID, perhaps uh, they can lend some consulting and some advice to you, um, you know, through through that correspondence. Uh, so with that said, I really want to appreciate, uh, I recognize and appreciate uh, Andrew's time for coming on and sharing that wealth of information with our audience here on the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce's page as well as several of our local pages here in Pottstown, as well as Limerick and Phoenixville and all the other different pages that we have syndicated to. Listen, if you are in need of uh, a transition and need that type of uh, consultation, reach out to Andrew. Go ahead and visit his uh, Facebook page. We have linked it in the description above. So go do us a favor, do Andrew a favor, reach out uh, as, uh, as our request. Go ahead and give him a like on, on, a, on one of his Facebook pages. The other thing that you can do to actually help Andrew out and, uh, you know, as he has a local business is go ahead and share this Facebook live, this chamber chat live, uh, wherever you are, whatever groups that you're a part of, uh, let's go ahead and give Andrew a little bit of a hand here. And in turn, I'm sure he'll be making himself available to anybody that requests his consultation. Uh, so with that said, Andrew, thank you so much for being a guest today. Uh, those of you who are watching live or on replay, we've got another episode coming up this Wednesday at two o'clock, and then we're going to be taking a break for the month of July, right? Uh, it's, you know, Independence Day is this uh, upcoming Saturday. Uh, so we're all going to, uh, you know, uh, take a little bit of a break for the, for the month. Uh, things are being rearranged at the, uh, at the chamber. We've got some pretty amazing things coming up, uh, but we're going to take a break during the month of July, uh, but go ahead and visit us here again this 
Wednesday, 2 o'clock p.m. for another riveting uh, uh, interview. We've got a chiropractor that's going to be joining us talking about uh, all kinds of things in health and how you might be able to keep yourself well aligned. With that said, Andrew, thank you so much for being a guest today on Chamber Chat Live. Bill, as always, you are an amazing, amazing uh, host uh, amongst other uh, uh, amazing attributes there. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out today, and we'll, we'll talk to you guys real soon. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Drew.